Good morning, welcome back. It is a beautiful day here on the Costa Blanca. After days and days of rain, we even had hailstones yesterday afternoon. It's just unbelievable for April. So we thought, what better time than today, sun is shining, to talk about where we get our electricity from. We are totally off grid. We don't even have a road here. Um, so we rely, just as we did our water supply, what falls out the sky, we rely on this big yellow ball up in the sky, the sun. Um, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we installed our solar system and the cost of installation um, as opposed to getting our ma getting mains electricity um, put into the house and of course then it only puts it to the house it doesn't install the electrics in the house um, so I hope you inv uh, enjoy the video any questions or comments please put below and um, let's get on with it Hi, we're Sharon and Andy, welcome to Think Alive in 2019 we bought a derelict finca that used to be a bodega in the Mercia region of Spain. The building was an empty shell with no main services, water, electric or sewage and we're restoring it doing all the work ourselves with the view to giving us an off-grid debt-free home. In addition to this self-sufficiency is very important to us so we're going to aim to produce as much of our own food as possible and the idea behind these videos is to log our progress but also to provide you with something you hopefully find interesting and informative. Please join us on our journey. So we rely primarily on the sun for the bulk of our power. Um, we've got two solar arrays, one behind me, which is two panels, an array of four panels here. Each panel, is we've got six in total, each is 335 watts, giving us just over two kilowatts. We put them on the floor rather than on the roof. Two reasons, they're easier to maintain and the angle of the roof isn't optimum for all year round. And we made these frames, we can change these bars and we can adjust the tilt of the panels more upright in winter and more horizontal in the summer. They're actually sat on the autumn and spring setting because it's spring and um, so they get the optimum angle from the sun. They face directly south, which is just handy because this wall did line up nicely with that. Um, when we put them in, we mentioned on a previous video about um, the trenches, there's a cable, they all join together, there's a cable runs down the ground and into the house. So the cable from the panels comes in here, the system is 24 volts and we've got a four kilowatt inverter. Um, this was the original battery charge, charge control we put in. Um, we, this does all the charging and everything. It's all automatically. We leave this in so we can see what the voltage of the batteries are. We currently do a 29 volt bulk charge, which it does every day once they've been depleted overnight. Um, so this is where the, the cables that run in from outside. There's an isolated switch on them so we can switch the, the power from the panels off if necessary. And this runs from the inverter down to the batteries. Again, with an isolate, isolated switch on that so we can isolate the batteries from the system as well. So we've got four six volt batteries, um, all wired in a series. The 650 amps battery power we've got here in total. These are actually lead acid traction batteries. Um, we thought about getting lithium batteries. We are aware of the benefits of them potentially, but the cost is like three times as much as these. And these are expected to last 10 years or so anyway. Um, they never get depleted that much. Um, and if they, they do get low, we do have a backup generator which we can run um, to charge the system up. So the generator, it feeds into here and it's got its own separate breaker um, and that again is wired directly into the the inverter so they, this does absolutely everything so if we've got a high power demand the welders for example um, we just run the generator because four kilowatts isn't enough for a, a massive TIG welder <laughs> um, so we just run the generator and that powers through there directly into our breaker box here 
the circuits we've got in here, we've got the main one for the house, um, the cable runs out the back directly into another consumer unit in the house. We've got a separate welding socket, welding circuit um, for high power which comes from the generator in the box there. Then we've got the workshop sockets and we've got a little spare one here because I'm sure there'll be lots of other things added in the future. Um, a couple of plug sockets, a row of sockets go up there and various sockets dotted around the, the workshop. So essentially we can run um, all our workshop tools um, if, if we use the power off the grid when the sun's out, even, this even applies in the middle of winter, so sort of around 1, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, if the sun's shining we can run all our workshop tools, um, washing machine, all domestic appliances um, without it affecting the batteries at all. All we tend to use the batteries for really it would be overnight, um, a couple of lights, running the computer, um, that sort of thing, uploading videos. Uh, in the evenings. The fridge is on constantly all the time but that'll be a AAA rated fridge freezer. The only other thing which is the biggest draw is a water steriliser. Um, it's probably about the biggest one you could get and that's 55 watts um, and it coats admirably with that as well. Not to mention the water pumps but generally if we use high load items in the afternoon when the sun's out we don't have a problem. If the worst comes to the worst we can always fire up the generator for 20 minutes or so. Um, on that note as well, we actually have two compressors. Uh, in this little box to the right, not strictly electrical, um, we've got two air compressors. The green one's a smaller one, and that just plugs in and runs off the, the inverter. The big one, that will only run and runs automatically when the generator's running. That's mainly because I've got a plasma cutter, and using the plasma cutter, which relies on air as well, and the compressor, just trips it instantly. So you might be familiar with this, it's our generator. It's a 16 horsepower, 11 kilowatt generator. Um, it's, it's massively more than what we need. Um, we need to run this if we get three or four days of, you know, dull days, which is very rare here. But we've just had that with a bit of rain as well. It uses a litre, it's a petrol one, it uses a litre an hour. It does now, if you remember we had to fix it because it was leaking here. Um, it's still fixed, it's still not leaking it's, and it's still temporary. <laughs> but basically this, this does a wire runs into the house there, where we showed you inside into the back of the thing and this will run everything um, if we can't get enough from the solar panels. Okay so if you remember from our water video we had Eddie in to dig a big trench all the way along the front of the house to put water pipes in but also there is an 8mm armoured cable that comes from the workshop and solar all the way to the house. So this is the 8mm armoured cable that comes underground from the workshop into the house. Armoured because this has a really tough outer coating and a metal sheath inside that the three wires run through. 8mm because it has a long way to travel um, so that we don't get a voltage drop. So that goes into the second of our consumer units and um, this is the main RCD switch. This um, power is for the pump, the sewage pump, which will be covered in a different video. Um, this is for the sockets for the house. At the moment we just have two and we're running off extension cables. Obviously eventually there'll be lots more sockets. This uh, is for the flat, so the cable goes up here to the flat. This is for the lights, um, the lights for the house. Um, but obviously the cable has to go up and under the floor upstairs before we put the floor down for these temporary lights probably just see them um, that are going to be in here and then the rest of the house. Um, we've got cable here that then goes back underground to the main part of the house so we don't have any ugly wires being seen and this is for our internet we're going to have the whole house wired for internet. Okay finally not very exciting 
and the power comes up from downstairs here. That's our feed to the apartment. That goes straight into another consumer unit, very simple one, um, that just powers the sockets. We've got in the bathroom, in the bathroom, it's normal in Spain. In the bedroom, there's going to be a couple on here, and in the living room. These are for the downstairs lights, so the light power you saw downstairs comes up into these. We've got them marked up, lights, <laughs> and these run, and they're, it's all temporary, don't worry at the moment. But they drop through, and the light you saw downstairs is actually on the end of that wire there, just so we've got a bit of temporary lighting downstairs should we need it. If summer's coming, not so bad now. So we're back in the courtyard in our favourite spot by the, the interior water deposit hit. Um, got a bit of dappled sunshine under the tree. Um, so what does this all cost? Um, basically, Iberdrola, who were the, the suppliers in Spain in this area, for electricity, wanted 5,500 euros to put us on the grid. After that, and normally, our normal electric bills, and we are very frugal with the electric, um, we're paying about 60 euros a month, thereabouts, um, so which is another 720 euros a year. Um, <laughs> awfully expensive. Electricity in Spain is very expensive. So, breaking it down, our solar panels, our whole solar system, starting with the panels, the panels were 100, about 100. 40 euros each so that's 600 eight, 840 euros for the panels um, the inverter was about 700 uh, adding this up are you? Oh, somebody had you adding it up <laughs> um, the batteries were the one of the most expensive they were 1600 euros um, but again hopefully they should last 10 years um, the other bits, cables, ancillaries, and bits like that. Bearing in mind that the Iberdrola 5500 is only to put the power to your a consumer unit in your house. It doesn't actually do any more. So we're gonna we're not gonna go into the cost of the installation at, at this moment anyway. But the cost of the ancillaries, probably the armor cable, um, the cable, the underground cables from the panels, and that probably. It would it would have been much less than three hundred euros in total. So what's that up to? Less than three thousand five hundred. Less than three thousand five hundred. So we've got a, when you got a calculator that <laughs> next to you. Yeah? Um, so basically, we're, we're two grand ahead on what it would have cost for the installation, and everything we get. Oh, sorry, the generator. The generator was about seven hundred euros. Um, so what's that? Four, just over four thousand euros in total. And for that, essentially, our electric is free. Um, apart from we've got to put, you know, we, we, if it's really cloudy for three or four days on the run, we need to run the generator for perhaps an hour, maybe two hours a day at a litre an hour. So if we've got 100, 100 euros a year there, we're well in, well in. And if we've got to replace the batteries in 10 years, that's another 160 euros a year. Is that right? Yeah. 10 years, yeah. yeah. So for, you know, 250 euros a year, um, which is much less than the 60 euros a month, or 60, even the winter sometimes, even that goes up to 80 euros a month. So it's it's way, way, way cheaper for us to, um, to be on the solar in the first place. Massive savings for us. Um, one thing we forgot to mention actually, our hot water is also heated by solar as well. Um, some days again when it's dull it doesn't give us um, quite enough we did show the, the hot water when we talked about our water video if we don't get we might have to boil the kettle to do the washing up um, we may put in a secondary gas system for heating if we struggle to get enough hot water but generally the sun gives us more than enough bubbles it bubbles <laughs> it boils yeah we have to put a, a valve on it to stop us scalding ourselves mm. anyway so that's about it for the solar system. Um, can't think of anything else, can you? No. If you have got any questions or any comments about today's video, anything that we've forgotten to mention that you'd be interested to know, please drop them below. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have found it interesting and informative. Um, if you haven't already done so, 
please subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll it's free <laughs> and it'll really help us out yeah and we'll see you next time thanks for watching thanks